Hello and welcome to the Vibrant Health Solutions Radio Show. I'm your host, Dr. Rita Marie Loscalzo, and each week I come here and bring you cutting edge information to help you lead the healthiest and the happiest life ever. And I believe that we need to take our health care into our own hands, which is why I'm a big fan of education and bringing on experts and sharing from my own experience things that we've learned over time that have helped us and clients we've worked with to just turn their health around when all hope was lost or turn their health around when they're just tired of just silly symptoms that everybody said was all in their head. So I get excited when I get to share with you special people and special topics. And today I have a very special person and a very special topic. So I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you a little bit about the topic, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the person, and then we will jump right in and get started. The topic is about gut bugs. You heard me, gut bugs. You know, critters that live in your belly. And before you turn off the radio now and say, ew, it's true. We all have these bugs, these gut bugs that live in our bodies. And there's the ones that live there are supposed to be, like, super helpful. They're, like, the super, super, like, cooperative, and they help out, and they make vitamins, and they help digest our food. But unfortunately, we live in this real world with lots of stresses and toxins and exposures that cause our good gut bugs to kind of shrink and go hold back because there's these big bad meanies that start to grow in our guts and they get us out of balance and they don't make vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and help us digest our food. They just do these little bad things and attack and make toxins that make us feel bad. And we're going to learn today that it's not just all in your gut as far as how the symptoms of these little critters comes about. So let me tell you that. So I got you a little bit excited, and hopefully I didn't get you turned off. And now let me tell you about who we have here, a very special person to present. And the reason, one of the reasons I'm really excited to present is because I've gotten to know Steph. Her name is Steph Jackson, and she's from Vancouver, Canada. And I got to know her very well over the last year because she's in my Nutritional Endocrinology Practitioner Training Program. And she's a shining star in our program, and she's brilliant, and she's a researcher, and she's got a heart of gold. And she is super passionate about helping you to become your best and live your best health ever. Because Steph is very healthy now, and her body's kind of working the way she would like it to be most of the time. And she's happy, and she's healthy, and she eats great food, and she takes care of her little boy. And it wasn't always like that for her. In fact, it wasn't that long ago that she wasn't feeling so well. And she did the typical doctor, 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 and nobody really could help her. And it was through her own digging and, and learning that she discovered some of the stuff that she's going to share with her, with us today, which completely turned her health around. And it's completely turned the health around of a lot of the patients, clients that she's been working with. So I'm going to let Steph tell you a little bit more about her story, and then we're going to dig into those little critters that are living in your gut and how you can create peace and harmony with them instead of all-out war. So Steph, I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Rita Marie. It's such an honor to be here after listening to so many of these. I can't believe I'm on the radio show. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Yes, and you have so much to share, and you have some really mm-hmm. unique perspectives, and that's why I invited you here. It's no, not because I love you and you're so, you know, a great student at all. It's because you have a unique perspective that I don't hear often, and I want you to be able to share mm-hmm. that with people so they have the hope of, and they have something to look forward to in terms of finally getting their their digestive issues settled or some of the other issues, as we'll talk about, that they may not even know they have digestive issues, that they they just have these unexplained symptoms. So I know that you've been through the ringer here with your own health, and I'd love to hear just a a short enough version to get people inspired because they may be dealing with something similar. And I like to give people that feeling of hope that, hey, there is maybe a solution for me too. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to share a little bit about how I came to this. Um, Because 
um, I'd had digestive symptoms my whole life, and I, of course, had thought, you know, that they were totally normal. Um, and it was sometime, you know, in my early 30s when I figured out that I was celiac. Um, and it had gone undiagnosed for, for a really long time. And even though it was in the family, I just kind of you know, didn't really clue into that. But I'd been eating, you know, dairy-free for ages, for decades at that point. Um, and I still wasn't feeling very well. So then I, I cut out the gluten and, you know, I, I still wasn't feeling very well. And then my son was born and things got way, way worse. And my my joints got swollen and black and and super sore. And I wasn't even able to really like go grocery shopping or make green juice by myself because it would just hurt too much to pick up the knife or pick up stuff in the kitchen. Like I was pretty, it was, it was very painful and, and I was exhausted. Um, and I was really unable to take care of my son properly, and it was it was it was bad time for me, absolutely. But having Ugh. already researched so much about the food, you know, I'd been researching the food for decades. I knew there was something more to it than that. You know, I was already gluten free, I was already dairy free, I was already eating high raw. Like there's something else going on here. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I want to just stop you there for a second because I want people to really tune into that because I hear that a lot. I just don't get it. I'm eating all this great food. I'm I'm gluten free. I'm dairy free. Yet I'm still having problems. What's going on? So if that's you, really sit sit here. Don't multitask. Get out a notepad. Take some notes, and just really mm-hmm. listen in because if this is you, then. Jeff, what Jeff has to say today may really turn your life around. So thank you. Um, yeah, so I started researching more more about the body, right? Um, and I hadn't quite honed in on, on the gut yet. It was not until my son started to, he was, you know, just over a year old, he was starting to eat solid foods, and, and I knew I wanted him to have some probiotic bacteria. Um, and I knew I wanted to feed him some kind of yogurt. And I'd be damned if I was going to feed him anything from the grocery store. Like, I started reading labels <laughs> in a hole. <laughs> and I've been, I'm like a seasoned label reader here. But some of the things that I would let slip into my own body, I realized, wow, I'm not feeding this to my son. He is totally helpless here. You know, it's up to me. Um, so I started making my own yogurt. And then people started to want to buy my, my yogurt. And I was making it out of almonds and, and coconut at the time. Um, and people started to come, you know, to my back door and buy this yogurt off of me. And then I thought, well, you know, I better start, <laughs> better start yeah. doing some research here because I'm starting to be responsible for not only my son, but like a community of people who are trying to get real food, which actually was so exciting and inspiring for me at the time. Right. Um, and I was still still pretty sick here. So I'm lying on the couch <laughs> um, doing some research, um, just trying to figure out what would be best to put in my yogurt. And the stuff that, that I learned about bacteria and our digestive systems that, like, keep in mind, I am a reader, and I've been reading stuff about health and about the body and about digestion for literally decades at this point. The stuff I learned about bacteria when I was trying to make my own yogurt blew my mind. Mm. Um, and I couldn't believe that this information was not out there for people. Because it was all there, like it was all in studies, like it's it's there, um, but it's not it's not for sale in capsules, and it's not in the yogurts that we can buy in the store. And the research, you know, there's so much, there's a huge body of research on this, and I know that some of it's still really new, but it's it's not quite at the point where we're aware of this stuff um, generally. So I got pretty excited about sharing it with people um, and, of course, using this information on myself to get myself up off the couch and um, get my life back. (laughs) Wow. And so was this, like, something that just, like, completely turned your health around or was it a slow process going in? Because it was just specific bacteria that you learned to inoculate into your yogurts, right? Right, yeah. So, So learning about the yogurt... You know, I just collected a whole bunch of research and papers and papers about different bacteria. And then I thought, wouldn't it be great to put this bacteria in the yogurt? Oh, we can't buy it. Couldn't it be great to put this bacteria in? Oh, it's not for sale. Um, And so that's that's one thing. But then for my my own health, 
um, definitely changing the bacteria in my in my gut totally changed my health um, along within other parts of my body so it's not like you know changing your gut bugs are necessarily going to heal everything but I think it might be the one thing that if you do everything else that one thing could stop you from getting better mm. Mm. Um, I, yeah so I had I had bacterial infections in other parts of my body and my sinuses and in my I had a bone infection as well um, so I had a pretty serious bacterial thing going on everywhere. So it was in my best interest to figure that stuff out as quickly as possible. Absolutely. As quickly as possible. So how long before you were able to be as bright and shiny as you are right now? So once I started, you know, I started, I made a plan, a really systematic plan. I love to make systems, and I just followed it. And I remember at three months, almost losing hope, just going like, man, this is not worth it, you know, and I went and I talked to somebody else who I knew who also had recovered from rheumatoid arthritis, and and I I just told her I was about to give up, and she said, just wait, wait a couple more weeks, you know, see what happens, and uh, yeah, that's the last time I really remember being in pain, so I always guess it took about, you know, you kind of forget how bad, how bad it is, you kind of black stuff out, (laughs) Yes, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it was some somewhere between three and four months that I started being able to be be really like feel awake and um it's, and it's hard to describe pretty no, I was just say that's that's with pretty much just doing what you had been doing in terms of your juicing and your good foods and your gluten free, dairy free and balancing the the thing you changed was the balancing those bugs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you were going to say it's almost like... Yeah, it's it's hard to describe exhaustion, and it's kind of like one of those things you only really know unless, unless like, if you've been there. Um, but you know when it's gone. <laughs> yes. You feel fully present in your life, or, you know, I felt fully present in my life, and I was able to, to be in the moment and be there with my son in a way that was not kind of like I was in a haze. Yeah, um, the fact that bacteria and and our digestion can can do that to us, kind of take out the shininess of life. <laughs> yeah, you know that yeah. sucks. And put you in that cloud. It really does, and it's so easy. So, a couple of things I'd like you to share with people is one is how do these guys get out of balance in the first place, and then what are some of the right. ways that they show up. It, you know, in the gut, but there were other, lots of other things. It wasn't your gut that really drove you to seek solution. Right, yeah. Um, okay, so some of the ways that they can get out of balance in the first place. Um, I'll go for the, the easy ones first. So chlorinated water, mm. antibiotics. Um, and sometimes, sometimes those things you know, are unavoidable, and those might be things that happened when we were really little. So um, I think most of us have had chlorinated water and antibiotics at some point. Yeah, yeah at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and some other things that can happen are, you know, being born through a C-section, um, mm. not having like a, a vaginal delivery, um, or getting some kind of a can traveler explain that to people bug. a little bit? Because I want you to explain that C-section thing. Because C-sections are at yeah. an all-time high now. They're like 40% yeah. of all births these days are considered to be done through C-section. A lot of them are elective C-sections, not like right. baby, mama's in danger, baby's in danger, let's hurry up and cut baby out. It's more doctor mm-hmm. has a golf appointment or mom is going on vacation the following week and wants to make <laughs> sure she's done. So... Let's talk just so briefly about how does that affect baby's gut flora? Right. Okay, well, so I just want to preface with my son was born through C-section. Even after I had been to a midwife, you know, and I tried everything I could, and things just didn't go the way that, that were planned. Right. So sometimes right. these, these mm-hmm. interventions sometimes are totally happy. necessary. Yes. Yeah, totally yes. necessary. Um, yes. But what happens when, when, so when the baby doesn't go through the birth canal, like, like it was designed to, uh, like he or she was designed to, um, they don't get kind of inoculated by all the friendly bacteria that are on the mom's body, 
you know, we have friendly bacteria in our in our digestive systems and in our sinuses and in our reproductive systems as well. And so just going through the birth canal, the baby gets exposed to just a dose of bacteria that helps their immune system to sort of be ready to exist in the in the living world here. Um, mm. Yeah, and so without that, and then especially like my son um, was born really early. He was born via C-section, and basically I never even got to see him. He got taken away and put in like some incubator somewhere. Oh, um, so he missed out on that whole that whole thing. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, and so whatever bacteria were hanging around on the nurses, their clothing, in the air, is what he got inoculated right. with rather than the good floor. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so it's it's a big deal um, because some of those bacteria, are, as, as you're going to learn later in this radio show, I'm sure, um, most of those good bacteria that are in our bodies, we can't replace easily. Mm-hmm. We can't get yeah. them from yogurt, and we can't get them from probiotics. Um, and one of the only places we can get them from is is our parents, um, our familial connections, um, or the bacteria that are in nature. So all these things that are commonplace, so chlorinated water, very common. Uh, the mm-hmm. antibiotics, very common. C-section, mm-hmm. very common. What about the yeah. pesticides and all that stuff that's on the non-organic foods? Does that contribute to Absolutely. Or, pro, or this is meat, eating more. animal products that are, you know, grown and given loads of antibiotics. Yeah. Antibiotics, for sure. Um, and, like, without going too heavily into antibiotic-resistant bacteria, because that's, like, a total other show, um, mm-hmm. what ends up happening is some of them end up getting stronger and getting, basically, they, they pack a suitcase full of um, uh, resistance to different different antibiotics and they can pass this suitcase to other bacteria and so they can kind of teach all the other bacteria to become resistant too and so then you end up with a whole bunch of really strong ones and some of the more delicate ones uh, get lost Mm. if that makes sense wow Um, yeah totally and other things like like gm gmo genetically modified um foods have been shown to to change the dna in the bacteria themselves which i'm sure has an effect um, on you. It has been shown to have an effect. Yeah. Well, wow. so all this stuff contributes. And, I mean, mm-hmm. we always have to ask the question, and this is a question that's so hard to answer, but I'll just to put it out there, is why does one person who's been exposed to all these things cre- get this, have this problem and another person not? Or somebody like you who had been off of the chlorinated water and, and not on antibiotics for for a while, how mm-hmm. does that happen? You know, why is one person and not another? Right. Well, I think that, you know, in terms of symptoms showing up, there are other factors, mm-hmm. right? Um, and yeah. we definitely had some autoimmune stuff in our in our genetics and um, things that made it show up faster for us that they were out of balance. Mm-hmm. And I do think that I never really had my bacteria right to begin with. <laughs> Um, yeah. So what seemed like it was normal to me was just way off of normal. Like I remember being, yeah. you know, 12 years old and wondering why my pants didn't fit after lunch. Ah. Uh, you know, and I just felt like, you know, wow, well, I wish I was like those girls whose like bellies are flat. You know, and mm. I, it's just not something you talk about. It's and it just kind of, but. <laughs> No one's going to, if your whole family is kind of having those symptoms, no one's really going to say, like, hey, it's not normal. (laughs) It's not normal. It just is right. Maybe those people are abnormal with the flat bellies. Yeah. So that was one of the symptoms. You experienced digestive stuff your whole life, you said, and the the belly exploding basically after every meal so your pants didn't fit anymore was one symptom. And I'm sure a lot of our (laughs) listeners can relate to that one. Um, and, you yeah. know, certainly we can relate to the gas and the bloating and the gurgling and, you know, the, the burning and all those kinds of things that we have lots of over-the-counter medications that are advertised on lots of TV shows and radio shows and in magazines, so we think it's normal. <laughs> and it's not, so that's the first clue, right? But what are some of the other things that might be showing up? If somebody thinks they just have the normal digestion, and maybe they do have good digestion, 
but is it possible for these symptoms of these out of balance gut bugs to show up somewhere else? There have been so many things that are that have been linked, causally linked at this point to gut bugs, um, like anger and depression, and um, you know there are there are some some gut bugs that if they're out of balance um, can contribute to type two diabetes, um, to an inability to lose weight, anxiety. Like I, I hate to cite this study because it's a study done on rats. Um, and it's a study done on clinically depressed rats. <laughs> so oh, basically took, I know. So they took a bunch of rats and they determined that they were clinically depressed, which, you know, <laughs> is just so sad. Um, and then they took a bunch of rats that were um, sterile, so they'd been, they have apparently not got any bacteria in their systems. I don't know how they do this. Um, but so they've got the clinically depressed rats and the sterile rats. They gave the sterile rats, um, the bacteria from the clinically depressed rats, <laughs> and they all got depressed. <laughs> oh. They, every one of them got depressed, every single one. So, like, they're able to, to make rats depressed by giving them <laughs> bacteria. Bacteria um, from the other, and, and I'm assuming they did that by, like, a fecal tra- implant or fecal something. Fecal transplant, they took the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the reason I bring that up yeah. is because people are doing that these days, right? That's considered now a kind Absolutely. of a medical thing, and boy, you better be careful yeah. who you get as a donor, right? Or you can take on right. their depression and find somebody who's happy and, and you yeah. know, energetic and feeling great and get their gut bugs. And so for you, so, yeah, you mentioned the joint pains, right? Is that a common manifestation yeah. of the gut bugs being out of uh-huh. balance? Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean it. It is. It, it yeah, is. and who would have um, thought, right? Being, I have good joint pain. Yeah. My gut, my gut bugs are, are out of whack, right? It's just not a yeah. connection that oh. the average person makes, which is why we're here today, right? Because we want to talk about this. Yeah, totally. And mine was what like makes- beyond like a little bit of sort of aching, sort of creaking stuff. It was like they were discolored and swollen. <laughs> so wow. I, typically, someone in that situation would be given some medication. It's just because I'm really stubborn <laughs> and <laughs> I was not willing to accept that. And I just kept digging and digging and digging. Um, but who would think that, the, that those things are connected, right? Right, right. We yeah. wouldn't. We wouldn't in general. Yeah. So it's good to be aware of that. So if you've got un explainable symptoms, right? You're like, I don't, we don't know what's wrong with you. Maybe you need some Prozac. Um, <laughs> think gut bugs <laughs> because it could, be out of, right. it, could, it could be out of balance. And I've seen it too with skin problems. A lot of people with chronic skin issues with, you know, eczema and psoriasis, gut bugs out of balance. Very, very commonly yeah. associated with that, right? Yeah. Um, kids who can't sit still and are diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and put on medications. For that, yeah. that could be yeah, your gut bugs, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There have been a lot of studies on, you know, a lot of people get a lot of benefit from the gluten-free and um, casein-free diet um, for kids that are the kids that yeah. are, are struggling with autism or, or hyperactivity, um, and they get even better results if if they can balance out the gut bugs. Okay, so. Definitely I want to just go back to this. So a lot of people are looking at probiotics. So I'll take probiotics and yogurts and kefirs and, you know, uh, fermented vegetables are just all over the place these days because people become aware that this is important. Right. You know, 20 years ago, if you wanted to try to find a nice unheated raw sauerkraut that was fresh made or a, a cultured vegetables, good luck. There was a lot in the can, but we know what happens mm-hmm. with cans. They're, they're heated and pasteurized and there's no longer any live cultures. And the yogurts that you buy, mm-hmm. the Dannons, and, you know, no offense to any one brand, but they don't really have a preponderance of live cultures. So it, is it is that a way that people can just go, oh, yeah, I, I have these things. I'm going to go and I'm going to make my own yogurt. Or I'm going to buy these coconut yogurts, almond yogurts. I mean, it's really amazing how many different ones are out there these days. Mm-hmm. So is that an approach that people can take? And if not, what else can they do? Okay. Yeah, I'd really like to to speak to that because this is a really important topic for me and probably 
the main reason why I got into this in the first place. Um, so all those all those bacteria that start with lactobacillus um, mm-hmm. or in the yogurt container because they need to save space, it might be L and then something, L ruteri, L plantarum, L acidophilus, bulgaricus, all those guys put together add up to no more than 2% of your total gut flora. So to be clear, out of like the, yes, out of the 400 to 1,000 species in our, each of our bodies, up to 2% of those are those lactobacillus strains or should be. Wow. This is what, this is the thing that I was like, oh my God, everybody has to know about this. You know, um, yeah. that we yeah. know this. Um, those are the ones that like to live in our small intestine and that in proportion can help keep our immune system balanced, can help us to absorb nutrients, and can help us to have a healthy environment in there. But out of balance, so too many of those guys, and we just have a bad situation in our small intestinal tract. So taking probiotics, this typical strain, the acidophilus is pretty typical strain, right? Mm-hmm. Just doing that and taking them in large quantities can actually throw the gut flora off. Is that what you're saying? That is totally what I'm saying. That is totally wow. what I'm saying. Wow. Yeah. And so those ones, they're transient bacteria. So they don't... If, it, if everything's working properly, they should not be taking up permanent residence in there. So, you know, it's okay to to have yogurts or to have, um, I don't know, coconut kefir or to have those those things with the good lactobacillus cultures because we do need to replenish them over time. Yeah. However, if that's all we're doing we are going to have a messed up system. And oh, boy, that's to... very sobering. Yeah. yeah, I know it is. I just want to say one one more thing um, here. The word probiotic is is controlled by the dairy industry. You're mm. not allowed to write probiotic on your product unless it has one of the bacteria that has been studied and has been labeled probiotic. And like we just talked about, those are a very small portion of the bacteria in your digestive system. And so what everybody has been telling us is, you know, the probiotic ones are the good guys, and then there's like a whole bunch of neutral guys, and then there's like some bad guys. And I'm trying to say all of those neutral guys are actually good guys. They just haven't been studied, and nobody's got a patent on them, and they're not for sale. So nobody's telling oh. us how good they are. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've painted a little bit of a grim picture here, and I don't like <laughs> leaving people with a grim picture because we're all out there eating our yogurts no. and making our cashew and coconut yogurts and drinking kefir and feeling like <laughs> we're really doing something here. And you're telling us that maybe not, and it might actually be making it worse. So what's the average right. person to do here? Right. So it's still good to do those things because, like I said, they are transient and they don't, you know, they don't live in there forever and we have to kind of keep replenishing them. Um, but so there's, there's the lactobacillus ones and then there's the bifidus cultures. So the bifidus cultures, we should have kind of 10 times those or maybe about mm-hmm. 10% of our, of our gut flora should be the bifidus cultures. So one thing that you can do, you know, is when you go and, and buy, um, a probiotic, make sure it's got the most bifidus that you can get. Um, they don't like to, to make them heavy on the bifidus because it's more expensive to produce. But you can mm. can get, there's like a bifido factor um, or custom probiotics has a powder. That's customprobiotics.com. They've got a powder that you can get that's high in bifidus or even just straight bifidus. And so so those ones, we'd want to get more of those and like less of the, the lactobacillus. Wow, so the typical formula is usually either equal or would have more lacto. So totally. it sounds like people really should be getting that separate bifidus to supplement yeah. the other one, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it is and available so, and we can buy it. It is available. 
Okay. Yeah. And you said it's more expensive, but what about getting it and then making your own yogurt keeper, et cetera, using exactly. that so that it, exactly. ah, we're on to something here. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's not so, enough to just make your own yogurt and use whatever yogurt you've got from someplace else. You can actually make your own yogurt and optimize the levels. Absolutely. So just for someone with no specific symptoms but totally just wants to do it right, you could get the bifidus, Mm -hmm. you can get the powder. Um, You know, and I end up using like a half a teaspoon to make a starter, and then I end up using that starter to make something like by by, um, making another starter with it and another starter and another starter, I end up making something like 60 liters. Like it ends up being quite a bit so you can really stretch like if you're worried about saving because the bifidus are more expensive saving money on it you can really stretch it out by making your own cultured you know nice. um, very free yogurts at home or whatever right yeah and when you say making a starter how do people learn about how to make a starter is that something that they can visit your website or do you have some kind of videos on that or how would you suggest people find out how to make a starter that's true um Oh, that's funny. Um, okay, so on my homepage on stephjackson.com, I have a, a a probiotic food craft book, and it'll it'll teach you how to make a starter, right. and you can use that starter then, not not yogurts, and yeah, that's great because that's a common term that's used, but people may may not be familiar, or they've heard it because they've heard of you know using a sourdough starter for making bread or using a yogurt starter, but not really knowing well how do I make my own? I thought you just take leftover yogurt and use it as a starter. So that's great. So stephjackson.com, go out there and download the probiotic food craft book. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and you don't have to use a starter. I just like to, to make it go as far as I can. To make it go far, in yeah. The, I'll, and then I'll get the highest quality bifidum that I can get, and I'll culture it. That's great. Yeah. Wow. So what else? You, you made a little caveat there, and I want to go back to that. You said if you're you know, doing okay and you're just wanting to, you know, maintain the good floor, this is a good approach. But I got the impression Mm -hmm. that if you're really messed up, there may be some other things you need to be doing. Right. Um, So each of the bacteria, they each kind of make something that the other bacteria need and they kind of take something and process it that that the other bacteria make kind of thing. Um, So depending on what's going on, like if you have like a, if you have a lot of allergies, if you have like a histamine reaction to foods or, you know, to springtime, (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. you can, you can get the bifidum infantis. So that's bifidum infantis. And, and those guys actually make an enzyme that gets rid of histamine. Oh. Which is so cool. Yeah, and so each of each of the bacteria, like the, all the ones that that are not probiotic, they each do something that is just so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is not some this is not stuff that's out there. I mean, it's not something we can just let's go get the book that tells us what all the gut bugs are and what they do, so we could choose. Right, this is stuff you had to dig right. and dig and dig. So you need to write a book. Yeah, yeah. that's a really <laughs> good idea. Yeah, yeah what a yeah, great I have idea. to dig and dig and dig. Um, I want to tell you about a fun game that I played on the weekend. Would you indulge me for a second? <laughs> I would love to hear it. Um, I had the opportunity. I was I was at an event, and I had the opportunity to lead like a five-minute segment. <laughs> five minutes. And um, I was trying to think of what I could do in five minutes. And so and there were only like 25 people there. Um, but what I did is I gave them each a bacteria. And so I stuck these names of bacteria on there. <laughs> on their shirts and so everybody was walking around ah. with their little name and um I told them each what they made and then what they needed and I told them to go in and find someone that had what they needed and and I told them to do it silently we do it kind of like musical chairs and so within the five minutes everybody in that group ended up holding hands with everybody else so every single one of those bacteria was using something that another bacteria made and it was just so interconnected um i'm so excited about how this game game actually worked wow that's so (laughs) fun 
Um, so they yeah, got so it, fun. right? They got it that they, disrupting one of them could disrupt yeah. them all. Right, just like ta- like why antibiotics or or chlorinated water. If it if one's super sensitive to chlorine and you're drinking chlorinated water, that one goes bye bye, and then the whole rest of them get out yeah, of whack. Exactly, exactly. And so, oh, yeah, just, yeah. But a lot of those ones that so if you're kind of panicking and going, I can't get the right bacteria, they're all gone. I had antibiotics, and um, a yeah. lot of those are in in naturally fermented foods. You know, they're in nature. Um, and so if if vegetables that are grown in good soil um, that are organic um, have been fermented, then mm. those bacteria that were on the plant when it was growing will will be in that culture. You know, so we'll be getting a more balanced, more balanced uh. culture. Um, so if you uh. don't want to make them yourself, you can definitely now go you know, to more grocery stores and farmers markets and and uh and and get like as as long as you're asking, make sure that it's not pasteurized and right. Yeah, you can get the foods that yeah. yeah but what that about washing them off? Does that make a difference? Like, you know, we're a germ phobic society, right? So mm-hmm. you know we we have the triple wash wash spinach and the quadruple wash this and that and the other thing and what and people are using, you know, sprays to spray their vegetables because they want to get the pesticides off. But what does that right. do to the bacteria counts? Right. Yeah. And so definitely, it definitely changes things. I mean, it's it's never going to kill all of them. <laughs> um, Good. <laughs> but yeah. But the ones left standing, like I don't want a a host of kind of super bionic, like superhero. Um, Bacteria. I just want normal, balanced bacteria in my body. I don't want the ones that have been nuked and had chemicals sprayed on them and had antibiotics. And I don't want the ones left standing after some kind of explosion. Mm. I want the balanced mm. ones. So I, I got to stress buying organic foods. I know not yeah. everybody can can have a garden um, and grow their own food. If you can, that's that's excellent. But if you can't, um, speak up. You know, when you go to the store, ask for organics. We're really at a tipping point here. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, they're starting yeah. to listen. <laughs> they are. So, it's more and more supermarkets, even yeah. in small towns, are starting to have that. So it is important. And um, I would say that, would you agree with this? If you're growing your own food in your backyard and you know that, you know, you haven't had, you know, lots of stray animals peeing on them or whatever that you're concerned about is to just not wash them? Would that be a useful thing to do? I can't believe I'm going to say this on the uh, radio show, but that's sort of what I'm saying. A lot of the bacteria that we really need are in the dirt, and that's why they're not for sale because they're dirt cheap. Nobody's figured out how to monetize them, so they're not in the pills and potions, and they're in the dirt. Um, You know, Okay, so let's bacteria. Go ahead. No, go Um, ahead. I want you to finish because I I have a cool idea. Yeah, I was going to give one example. There's a bacteria that that eats oxalates. And I know you have a really sophisticated audience, and so they're totally going to know what oxalates are. Um, But oxalates are those things that are in a lot of leafy green vegetables that that can cause problems for a lot of people, and they can be – there are some people that can't digest them properly. There's a bacteria that can eat oxalates. Um. And it's a delicate bacteria in our systems, and of course we can't buy it um, in probiotics. But can you guess where in nature this oxalate-eating bacteria would live? Okay, in the in the dirt, in the dirt, or around plants that have what oxalates? Oh, yeah. oh. right. Oh yeah, because right. they're looking for they're they're smart. They know, yeah, they know what they they want to eat it. They're there. They're already there. <laughs> so can we so, grow spinach and then scoop the dirt out and somehow make a, uh, something from you know, the dirt? <laughs> yeah, you know, that is true. That is that is something that, that can – they do have soil-based um, organisms now that you can that you can buy if you want to have a yeah. you know, more pure kind of, pure kind of thing. Um, so you can buy those. Um, or you can ferment those vegetables that are – 
from the dirt. <laughs> Interesting. So grow things that are, if you're sensitive to oxalates, maybe grow things that are low oxalates right next to the ones that are high so that there's a lot of those bacteria on it. That's a cool, That's I would love to do a culture and test that. Yeah, it would be interesting this to is see. Yeah. Totally aside, but it costs like a hundred bucks to send a yogurt sample to the lab. Okay. And after I found that out, I just want to send everything to the lab. <laughs> so you play and you come up with a concoction and and then you send it off to the lab. Okay. Because right. why not? Because we can. You know, we can. You can, um, absolutely. Yeah. I remember listening to someone speak, and she said to, one of her favorite things to do is to go out into, into the woods where things are growing, a lot of wild stuff, you know, away from where the, the you know the road is and all that, and to just dig a hole in the soil and just pull soil from that's, you know, not necessarily the very top, but stuff that's a little deeper so that it isn't contaminated, and then bringing it in and, and almost like make a tea out of it. I'm like, you're too much. <laughs> But she got to wow. put the water on it, and, she, and then she'd strain out the, the pieces, right? But, I mean, I yeah. guess you have to do it with cold water because you can kill the bacteria. But I thought that, well, it's kind of interesting. It's not the most appealing thing in the world, but it might be a way to get our buds. We digress here. Well, that's, that's really interesting. Well, there's Shilajit. <laughs> Shilajit is a dirt. Or, yeah. It's just dirt, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> we paid good money right. for that. <laughs> and and have this up in culture to see if they have good organisms in it? No, I don't I don't know anything about that, but yeah, I think we're onto something here. Yeah. I think maybe but, yeah. take some yogurt with chula seeds in it. And then yeah. send it to the lab to culture it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, so we'll get I'm back to you guys on, on all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll let you know. We're just a- Exploring where our minds are going. So um, on soil-based organisms, right? Because there are a few yeah. brands. Do you re- is that what you would recommend that people get? Do they do just that? Do they do that with the bifidus? Uh, you know, where where do people um, go with this if they want to just go with commercial products? So for someone who is compromised, for someone who suspects that they have leaky gut, I would not start with that. I would start with the bifidus. And I would start with trying to get rid of some of the overgrown bacteria and healing the leaky gut. And once there's kind of less of a chance that bacteria are going to go flying into the bloodstream, basically. Oh, right. Yeah. Then then I would go with the soil-based organisms to really rebuild the, the healthy, strong colony in there. Um, so it is a little bit, like it is a little bit of work. Like reclaiming our health is not something that can be done yeah. overnight, but it is something that can right. be done step by step. Step by step, right. And step speaking of that, I know you have some resources that people can, um, you have a class coming up and you did a whole bunch of videos and audios recently. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, um, that's true. I did a series of three videos um, just explaining what the probiotics companies don't want you to know and having a quiz where where you can see if your gut bacteria might be at the root of, of some of the things that you're struggling with. And I actually, I put together a probiotic desserts ebook <laughs> um, to ah! tempt you to come and get my free gift. Um, and the probiotic desserts ebook is at uh, stephjackson.com forward slash yummy. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's a great book. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's awesome. Cool. It's awesome. And um, somebody was posting on one of our, our practitioner groups about your the chia chocolate mousse or something. Was that one of the probiotic yeah. desserts? Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was something that was to sort of discourage the bad bacteria and encourage the good ones. And so I put together a little recipe. And, yeah, I was so happy that she posted that she liked that. That just made my day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy. She was wild yeah. about it. Yeah. It absolutely. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so if you get okay. the book, then then you can access all those videos and, and the quiz and everything, too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if they get the book, if they go to stephjackson.com forward slash yummy, then they can get yeah. access to the rest of the videos and everything. Yeah, and then I'll I'll send you a message with the link so you can go to the videos. If oh, you with want the link. To. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Super, super. Yeah, that way that's easy to remember. StephJackson dot com forward slash yummy. And then <laughs> you've also got this. Um, you've got a, a program coming up. 
and I want to I want to hear more about it because I haven't really heard much about it. In that you're actually going to help people to restore their gut bacteria. So tell us about that. So it's it's four steps that I've put together. Um, you know, and the first step is to to stop feeding the bad ones. So it's like as if you mm-hmm. have some kind of like a relative <laughs> that's overstayed their welcome at your house, or um, someone <laughs> like that, someone with stinky socks uh, sleeping on your couch, and you want to stop feeding them. <laughs> So the first thing, the first thing you got to do is stop feeding them, and then the second thing is to ask them to leave. You know, and and you can use herbs to ask them to leave. You can you can use other probiotics to to ask them to leave. And it's just when there's something that's a little overgrown that, that shouldn't be. So when there's like bloating and, and stuff like that after eating. Um, so then this, step two is to ask them to leave. Um, step three is to clean up. Because unfortunately, a lot of the time when we try to get rid of these organisms, whether it's candida or, you know, bad bacteria or, or whatever, um, they they put up a fight, <laughs> and when they when they when they die, um, they they excrete like chemicals into our system that we kind of yeah. have to get rid of. Um, yeah, yeah, and so we want to just make sure that we minimize the die off, minimize the feeling bad from that. Um, so yeah, that's step three: clean up and get rid of all the gunk. Um, and then step four is is to to replace them. And so we can in there and we'll like strategically replace them, make sure we're getting the right amount of bifidum and the right amount of lactobacillus and the right amount of soil-based organisms, and make sure it's in balance for each person because there's a little bit of strategy involved, you know. A bit of strategy for based some people, on the person. Yeah, for some people it's just like, hey, you know what? I have a bit of candida, you know, and then then it's pretty straightforward. But for someone who's been sick for a long time, like I was, um, and you know, I'm I'm thankful for that now because it's given me such great insight. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But for someone who's been yeah. sick, like like I was, then then they might need to to just know that you know which ones are going to be the ones that eat the acid, or which ones are going to be the ones that eat the carbon dioxide or like based on their symptoms, they're going to want more right. of one thing and less of another. And so those are the steps yeah. you take people through and you help them with yeah. the, that part of, you know, customizing it for themselves. So um, do you have a link for that one too, in case somebody wants to check that out? Yeah, it's it's a bit longer. Do you think we could post it under the, under the interview? Yeah, let's or, post it. Let's, you know? Yeah, we'll post it. Yeah. So go ahead and say yeah. it and we'll have Lynn... Make sure she posts it on the page, and I'll I'll take Lynn on to see if anybody has questions because I'm sure they're loaded with questions. Cool. Yeah, so go yeah, ahead. So the the link is um, stephjackson.com forward slash core hyphen reset hyphen info hyphen long. <laughs> what? Core I didn't I didn't plan that out. Reset hyphen info hyphen long. Goodness gracious, yeah. long. Okay. I, I, yeah, I wasn't we're planning gonna, on telling. We're going to have a little conversation after this, and we're going to help you change the name of that thing. Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't <laughs> planning on telling everybody about that today, but, yes, yeah, um, it's there. Yeah. And we start, people, yeah. yeah, we do start in five days. That's good. So, and then the other thing I want to make sure everybody knows and they're invited to is on Saturday you're going to do a presentation um, to take a little bit different turn but kind of on the same idea, which is about, um, what is it, the three ways that gut, uh, imbalanced gut bacteria sabotage your health. So um, yeah. you're welcome to come to that. And I have a link for that is drritamarie.com slash go slash teria. I like to keep my names a little simpler than you do. <laughs> Duly noted. DrRitaMarie.com <laughs> forward slash go forward slash gut bacteria. And that will give you a, a page where you can get the registration information for coming. And it's on Saturday morning. I think it's what, or Saturday afternoon. Is it one thirty that we're doing it? Yeah. one thirty my 1:30 time. Central. Yeah. Very central. Yeah. 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 And you're welcome to come to that and, and just hang out with us and find out more. So we'd like to yeah. have you there. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, Thank you again. It's been awesome, Steph. Really awesome. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk Thank again so very much. soon, I'm sure. Bye bye now. Thank you. Bye. Bye everybody. Come back next week to Vibrant Health Solutions Radio Show and 
um, visit us at the bio. Oh.